free to now open the service. So there we are going to have two major prayer points. We are going to first pray for the increase of the gospel of Jesus Christ all around the world. Um, I've been watching the news lately and it seems that Israel wants to ban Christianity. People will be arrested for preaching the gospel. And I mean, worse could happen to them. Maybe jail, I mean, killed, beaten, we don't know. But the Bible says that we should go and preach the gospel to the entire world. So we are going to pray, to stand up, to pray today and stand in that gap because if we Christians don't do anything about it, nothing will be done. Hallelujah. When a prophecy is given or when a word is given, it is up to us to act upon that word to make it pass. So let's stand on our feet and um, pray for the increase of the gospel all around the world. The first prayer point is in um, <coughs> Romans chapter 1 verse 16. It says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So let's pray today that the power of salvation that is in the gospel of Jesus Christ should flow freely all around the world. Father, we thank you. We worship you. We give you thanks for the free course of the gospel that you have given us. It is a gift that we do not deserve, but you have given it to us for salvation. You give it to us unto salvation. Hallelujah. And the, 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 the assignment was for us to go and preach the gospel. So we stand in the name of Jesus. We stand in the power of the Holy Ghost and we declare that the gospel is having free course all around the world in the name of Jesus. The Bible said the gospel will fill the earth like the water fills the seas. So there is no hindrance to the preaching of the gospel. There is nothing that the devil will do to stand against the word of God. The Bible says heaven and earth will pass but your word will not pass. It means that your word is true. Your word is everlasting. So we stand in that everlasting power of your word and we declare today that in Israel and all the other countries around the the world everywhere there is a living everywhere there is a living being everywhere there is a breathing human being the gospel will have free course on the land in the name of jesus christ the gates of hell will not prevail the gates of hell will not prevail they will try but they will not prevail in the name of jesus christ we have free we have free course when we are speaking to people we have free course when we are preaching the gospel in the mighty name of jesus calibra soto libra da bo shatala yamasata in that a in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is free cause for the gospel all over the world. The power of Jesus is reigning in every heart in this world in the name of Jesus Christ. The power of Jesus, the name of Jesus, his love is filling the hearts that we are preaching the gospel to. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Their hearts are surrendered in the name of Jesus Christ. And we are praying today that all our fellow Christians all around the world that are proclaiming the gospel, that are evangelizing, that are going to prisons, that are going to hospitals, that are going in the corners of the world that we don't think that human beings can go for the Lord. As they are going, as they are preaching, the Holy Spirit is preparing hearts, is softening their hearts in the name of Jesus. The hearts of stone are changing into hearts of flesh. The hearts of stone are changing into hearts of flesh. In the name of Jesus Christ. The gospel is prevailing. The gospel is prevailing. The gospel is prevailing in the name of Jesus. There is no law on earth that will stand against the word of God. We stand in the name of the, of the Holy Spirit. We stand in the name of Jesus and we declare there is an end. There is a ban to the war against Jesus and Christianity in the name of Jesus Christ. They will try but they will not prevail. They will try but they will not prevail. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. We are also going to pray for the souls around the world. There, not only there is, a, there is an attack on Christianity, but there is an attack on faith and belief himself. Here today in America, people are ready to believe any and everything but Jesus Christ. Somebody would rather worship a stone than agree that Jesus is Lord. So the Bible says that... Uh, I lost my breast. He said, uh, he 
said, I told you that you would die in your sins. For unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. That is John 8, verse 24. And we, we are seeing that a lot of people are dying in sins today. Somebody will rather, I mean, worship a stone or a crystal, telling, telling, telling themselves that it's the healing power of the crystal that is giving them life. But today the Bible says that if we continue like this, even us Christians, if we don't do anything, these people will die in sins and the Lord will hold us accountable for not preaching to them. So let's pray today for the world that they should come to the knowledge and realization that Jesus is the one through God that God should open their eyes the spirit and their soul to the truth that he is he there is no salvation without Jesus there is no life there is no healing without Jesus hallelujah let's pray La kira bo shele basaya masu se tele basikata pali anto le bradi ko se tele brada ra bo shata li ante kele haya basu se te mali ondari afasikata la brada honche kele basi tele bo shata Holy Spirit, we pray for the land we are in and all the lands of the world. Hallelujah! That you open their eyes. Hallelujah! That you take the blind for that the devil has used to blind them today. In the name of Jesus, open their eyes, open their spirit, and open in their soul. Father, Lord, bring them to the realization that you are the one true God. Holy Spirit, do the conviction in their hearts. There is no power in stones. There is no power in, in, in the air. There is no power in the stars. There is no power in the sun. Oh, Kira, bro, The only power rises with, in you, the one true God. The power to salvation, the power for life, the power for redemption lies in your blood. So in the name of Jesus, we pray and we declare today that the salvation that you have offered us, Father Lord, convict their heart. Give them the conviction that you are the one true God in the name of Jesus Christ. There is no power for salvation than in the blood of Jesus. There is no power for healing than the power of the Holy Spirit. There is no salvation but the salvation of the name that is in the name of Jesus. So we declare in the name of Jesus. We declare in the name of Jesus, backed by the power of the Holy Spirit, that the word Word is coming to the realization. Those that you have called before the foundation of the earth, those that are predestined for salvation, Father Lord, in the name of Jesus, we declare that the word of salvation, the power of salvation is written, is reaching them, healing their heart, softening their heart today. In the name of Jesus, I declare divine encounter. I declare divine encounter for each and every soul that is resisting the truth of your gospel, the truth of your salvation, the truth truth of everlasting love that is in you and declare today that they are experiencing divine encounter in the name of Jesus Christ. The same way that you encounter, Saul encountered you and became the greatest of all the apostles. The same encounter I preach, I declare over them today, over every resisting soul, over resisting spirit in the name of Jesus and we stand on the power of the Holy Spirit and we cast the devil away from these souls. We declare that from today, the devil has no hand upon their life anymore upon their lives anymore in the name of Jesus Christ the light of salvation is rising upon them the light of salvation is rising upon them and the red the devil flees the devil flees away from these souls in the name of Jesus we declare healing we declare peace we declare salvation we declare salvation in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah we are also going to pray today for the increase of the word of God in our churches. That as the leaders are preaching, the congregation, be it King of Kings, Dallas, or any other through Jesus' church. <clears throat> that as the word is being preached, the congregation is also receiving the word. And they are growing. Not, when I talk about growth, I'm not talking about growth in number. I'm talking about growth in the spirit. That we are growing in our spirit. That our fellowship and communion with Jesus is also increasing. Father, we thank you for growth. We thank you for increase. We thank you for 
for exponential growth in our relationship with you. We are praying for church leaders, those that you have appointed and anointed, that as they are preaching, as they are, as they are preaching and teaching the word, Father Lord, it's having effect. It's having impact in the lives of the congregations. Hallelujah. And we are experiencing growth in our spirit. That they are teaching us the right way. That they are teaching us the right word. That they are teaching us the true and, and pure gospel of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. We are praying for leaders today. That Father Lord, you should impact them with anointing to teach. With the anointing to impact. So that as they are giving to the congregation what you have given to them, Father Lord, is bearing fruit. Our fruits are our testimonies. Our fruits are our testimonies unto you. So Jesus, we pray today and we declare that there is growth in our spirit. There is growth in our spirit. The more we come to know you, the more we love you and the more, the more, the more we are Christ-like. Hallelujah. So give our leaders the wisdom. Give our leaders the knowledge required to teach us, to teach us and pull us into this anointing of growth in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We are also going to pray for ourselves today. I don't know what you're going through, but I know that I have issues in my life. I have problems that I, that, that I know I cannot solve by myself. It's only by the grace of Jesus. And his grace has sustained me to now. His grace has been, he has, has been sufficient for me. He has been faithful to see me through. But we still have to pray and surrender to him completely and say, Jesus, today I want to lay my burdens down at the cross, at your feet. Take them. He said his yoke is light that we should come and bear our loads upon him. So pray, open up your heart. There is nobody that will help you but Jesus. We, you cannot even help yourself. It's only Jesus that is going to help you. So cry out to him today. Kaba libra so you know my name, hallelujah. You know my name, yes, Lord. Oh, how you talk to me, keep a rebo, speak to me. Oh, how he tells me that I am his soul. Pour out your heart to Jesus today. Pour out your heart to the cry out to him today. Just calibro shit. The song say he talks to me. How he how he relates to you, how he consoles me, how he tells me that I am his own. So I am yours, Jesus. So all that all my problems, all my cares, I can cast them on you today. You know my heart, you know my desire, you know what I'm not even capable of repeat of telling myself. There are deep secrets hidden in the deepest of my heart that I dare not even open my mouth to speak about. But Jesus, you see my heart today. You see the darkest of the darkest of my heart. I cannot hide from you. The psalmist say, even if he lies in Sheol, Father Lord, your hand is going to reach him. So if you can reach me in the bosom of Sheol, Father, you can reach the bottom of my heart heart and heal my heart of the heaviness that the life issues has put upon me. So I am surrendering to you today. My problems, my care, I cast them on you today, Jesus Christ. All the doors that are open, that are closed, I declare they are open today in Jesus' name. All the promises you have given me, all the prophecies you have said to me, Father Lord, it is time for them to come to pass in the name of Jesus. Glorify your name and make a promise to pass in my life in Jesus' name. I declare to the soul blessing that is talking in the heaven in the spiritual realm. All my blessings are manifesting in the flesh for me in the name of Jesus Christ. All the financial doors are open for me. All the doors of increase are open for me. All the opportunities that I have been chasing for the Lord are blessed for you. Open those doors for me in Jesus' name. Open those doors for me in the name of Jesus Christ. Lee Rose said, the promise you made concerning my name. You said my name will go high, will go to places, Father Lord, it is time to fulfill it. This is my year of big dreams and big vision. And all the dreams and vision that are hidden in my heart, Father Lord, let them come to pass. Let them manifest in the flesh. My blessings will not be spilled.
spiritual. My blessings will not remain spiritual. They are manifesting in the flesh for the world to see, to be a testimony, to be a testimony that he that places his trust on you will never be left ashamed. He that places his trust in you will not be ashamed. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you today. We give you all the praise that you deserve. You deserve the glory, the honor, the adoration that is pouring out of our heart that was supposed to be. We give you thanks. Hallelujah. We worship you. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. There is no God like you. There is none compared to you. You say, where is the, where are the gods that help me create the, the heaven and earth? If there is anyone, then let them show. Let them come and plead their case. But none of the other gods show. Hallelujah. It was you alone that created us. So you alone deserve our glory. You alone deserve our praise. You alone deserve our adoration. Deserve our adoration. We thank you for we loving us and for choosing us before the foundation of the earth to be partakers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. To be partakers of the inheritance of Jesus Christ. And Father Lord, we declare to them that the rest of the world, that the rest of the people that are meant to partake of this gospel, that they are coming to your to your to the light of your salvation. We are calling them forth to the light of salvation in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare today in the name of Jesus that the preaching of the gospel has free course all around the world. The world, the Bible said that the gospel will fill the earth. So we stand today, we stand today in the promise of that word and we declare that the gates of heaven will not prevail against the preaching of the gospel in Jesus' name. The name of Jesus will prevail in the heart and in the souls of, of, the, of each and every one in the entire world in the name of Jesus Christ. We stand again the schemes of the devil to, to, to turn people away from your light of salvation in the name of Jesus. The name above all names. We declare that devil lift his souls alone in Jesus' name. Your light of salvation is rising upon the souls in the name of Jesus. And as we preach, as we labor in your field, for the Lord, they are producing fruits. They are producing fruits in the name of Jesus. We thank you for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us in our families, in our businesses, in our dreams, in our careers. And they are coming to pass in Jesus' name. You are, my, my father said, gold is mine and silver is mine. So we are not meant to beg. But we play by different sets of rules. We play by the heavenly rules. So in the name of Jesus, in the power of the Holy Spirit, we declare that all heavenly blessings financial blessings. They are ours in Jesus' name. They are ours in Jesus' name. The Bible says we are the head and not the tail. We cannot be the head with empty hands. So I declare today that our pockets are full in Jesus' name. Our pockets are full to the overflow in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for your presence in our midst today. From beginning to the end of this service, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your anointing. Have your way, Jesus. And receive our praises, our sacrifices, and our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's have the worship team on here and let's continue in worship and prayer. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Well, we may have to stand up again this morning. We are young. There's no old man in the church today. No old man. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I just want us to spend some more time in worshiping and referencing the Lord this morning.
can stop the music playing. I 
After the book of Romans, Romans is after the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles. So, 1 Corinthians 5, verse 10. 
Paul was speaking here. First Corinthians 5.10. If you are there, can you say amen? If you are in traffic, say amen. Now, of what I'm talking to us this morning is the gift of grace. The gift of grace. This month we're talking about the good and perfect gift. That's what we've been talking about all month. The good and perfect gift. Pastor, let me find that scripture that says I'm what I am by the grace of God. I think I have my note mixed up. Paul speaking he said I am what I am by the grace of God. First Corinthians 15 10. Thank you very much. All right, all right. So, first Corinthians 15 and verse 10. And so, Paul is speaking here and he said, But by the grace of God, I am what I am. Can we say, I am what I am by the grace of God? And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, in that. I labored more abundantly than all of you. Yet, not I, but the grace of God which was in me. The gift of grace. We all know the story of, of Paul, how he was a prosecutor of the Christians, how he was killing Christians, how he was such a bad person. How can it be that such a person can now be who Paul eventually became? I mean, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. You know, in the Nigerian election I just held, a lot of us don't even like the outcome because we feel like that person is a bad person. <laughs> we feel like he's a bad man. He's done so many things. It is it's undeserving. How can you put such a man at that place of power? Paul's case was what? It's not different from Paul's case. <laughs> and so if on the 29th of May, that person eventually becomes as uh, uh, gets sworn in as the president of Nigeria that would, would simply just be a case of grace a case of grace <laughs> a case of grace grace is when we get what we don't deserve that's really what grace is when we get what we don't deserve somebody calls it divine partiality when we get what we don't deserve Grace is when where human effort stops, but yet there is still continuity. And that is, that is grace. Grace has stepped in. Grace has stepped in. Grace is divine enablement. How could I, as a matter of fact, when you see some people do some things, you'll be like, wow, sir, I love the grace of God in your life. That means I can tell this is not by human effort. I can tell that this result, this outcome of your life, is not by power, not by might. It's got to be by the Spirit. And so that's why I will say, sir, I love the grace in your life. Some people will sing, will display. I mean, I've seen a video of the soccer player, uh, Mercy, and a fan ran to the field, touched his boot, his feet, and was kind of worshipping him. You know, <laughs> I mean, that first that fan was simply saying, "There's this has to be grace. Grace is when your outcome, your result is uncommon. Is uncommon. In the family, you are the only one that is successful. In the family, you are the only one that made it to college. In the family, you are the only one that has a happy marriage. In the family, you are the only one that your kids are doing well. When your result is uncommon, when your result is extraordinary, then it has to be grace." Because grace is when God's spirit begins to influence. Yeah. When God's spirit influences the outcome of our lives, then grace is at work. Praise the Lord. That's what grace is. So that gift of grace is what you and I have. We have that grace. We have that grace. 
irrespective of the current realities, God's grace is available to me and you. Now, it is not what we don't have that limits us. It is what we have but don't know how to use. God's grace is there. But if you don't tap into the grace, if you don't provoke the grace, if you don't activate the grace, you will live like ordinary men. The Bible says that you are God. He said, but because you don't know that you are God, say so you will die like ordinary men. God's grace is available to us even in this season. But if we are unaware of it, our life's outcome will be like that of ordinary people. I don't know about you, but I don't want my life to be ordinary. It cannot be. It cannot be. Jesus did not come to, to die and to say to me that greater works than this shall you do. Greater works is not ordinary work. Yeah. Greater work simply means extraordinary. Can somebody say amen? We need to know that grace is available. Even in the Old Testament, there was no grace. It was the time of the law. There were no options. It was one way. Thou shall not steal. You steal, you are gone for it. Thou shall not commit adultery. You do it, they stone you to death. Thou shall not kill. You do it. Paul killed people. But the same Paul now, you see the outcome. In the time of the law, you kill somebody, it is tit for tat. Tit for tat. You kill, you are killed. That was the Old Testament. But even in that Old Testament, there were still some people that enjoyed grace. There were some people that worked with God so much that they still tapped and enjoyed the mercy of God. Even in the time of the law. How much more now that we are in the era of grace? Let me, let me tell you something about, about Samson. Samson knew he had messed up. Samson was born, specifically, that was why Samson's birth was in response to a prayer. I hope we all know that in scriptures. So he was born to deliver the people. He was born and empowered, and a razor must not touch his hair. He would be a strong man, and only one man was killing 1,000 people because the Spirit of God was upon him to do that. So, you know why you were born. Why you were born is so important. Even Christ said, I was talking about Christ said, for this cause was the son of man manifest. There's a reason why I have manifested here in America, in Dallas. There's a reason why you are here. Aha. So Samson knew he had a cause. But Samson messed up on the lap of a beautiful woman, Delilah. Told the secret. And then they caught his hair. So Samson lived and died under the law. Samson was unable to tap into mercy. Because at the, eventually when God showed him mercy and the hair was growing back and the strength was coming back, even though he was blind at, at that time, he still was like, you know what, we all we just die together here. Just kill me, kill me, kill me. But he was under man. Who after he has even done worse will come and start telling God, have mercy upon me, O God. According to thy loving kindness. According to the multitude of thy tender mercies. It's one thing to say, your mercies. In answer, God, it is the tender part of your mercy that I know is a multitude. According to the multitude of your tender mercies. This man was talking to God and reminding God and in, it's not, I know I've done something wrong but it's not just me and in sin did my mother conceive me he's reminding God of his wretchedness he's also telling God that my sins are ever before me so that you forgive me and something that I will not see you something again tomorrow he's just talking to God in Psalm 51 I'm talking about the man David tapped into mercy even though it was in the era of the law in the era of the law there's no option it's one way. You do this, you get the instant repercussion for it. But the man David, in the time of the law, tapped into mercies. So much that there's even what is called the sure mercies of David. They were so sure. He knew how to tap into it. This guy called David. Tapped into it. Knew how to talk to God. Knew how to put God at a corner. He knew how to wind God. He knew how to sing to God. He just knew how to just get to God. And God will just have mercy on this guy all the time, always touching God's heart. Now, we saw David's life, how he enjoyed mercy, despite everything. He was an adulterous person, he killed someone, ah, come on, 
so cruel that you commit adultery in itself, it's wrong. How can you now send the husband of the person to go and die in the battle? But today, Jesus came from him. So even in the time of the law, people still enjoyed grace and mercy. How much more now that we are in the dispensation of grace? And when we talk about grace, let's not, let's be clear about grace. When we talk about grace, let's not just limit grace to, to, sin, to sin conversations. Right? Yeah, grace is not just about sin conversations. It's not just about, okay, I know I sinned yesterday, I'm good today because of grace. That's not just what grace is for. Grace is for second chance. Grace is that your past has been covered. That's actually what grace, what, what grace means. When the, when the president is leaving, the president issues a pardon. I remember the last time President Trump was leaving office, and that night, everybody was waiting for the pardon list. People's sins were forgiven. They get free from prison, even though the record is still there. That has happened to us. And unlike the presidential pardon, us is not getting our record. We are made clean. Can somebody say amen? So, grace has done that for us. You know, in, in Greek, Greece, uh, grace means charis. That's, that's why you have charisma. Where you have charm. You have beauty. You have creativity. In Latin, grace means goodness and generosity. When somebody receives grace, he doesn't receive grace in a small measure. He receives grace in a large measure. Large, large. There's grace. Meaning that you are the one that sets the limit. It's just like when we drive our cars. I don't know what your speed uh, meter is on your car. Maybe 180 or, or 240. That's the limit you can go. But you and I will never use that limit. Uh, because <laughs> even the government have put speed limit there. 75, 60. That you go on 75, that's all you may go forever till you are done with that car. That doesn't mean that that was the limit the car could go. The manufacturer made the car to go 240. It's just that you cannot manage that speed, at least on George Bush Highway. In an open field, yes, you can try a contest. Make sure you have your seatbelt on. <laughs> but that, that's how far the car can run. Your performance level now is not the optimum. There is a higher level you can do more, you can do better. And the grace is there. If you are willing to try to tap inside of it. The Bible was speaking with Job. He said, we shall lay up gold as dust. And I just had someone here today. Even in this season of layoffs, for you, you shall lay up gold. In the name of Jesus Christ. News of layoffs all over the place. But for you and I, in, even in this season, we shall lay up gold as dust. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so Paul was also speaking here in our, in our text, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 10. I've done so many bad things. I've killed, I've denied Christians. Like I've, as a matter of fact, when, when, when Saul said on his way to Damascus, it was good there to kill. And Christ appeared to him. And so this thing Paul said, now today I'm the one who's writing letters. I'm the one who's giving counsel. He said, listen, this is not ordinary. I am what I am by the grace of God. Yeah. But listen. Anything you have today, you have it by the grace of God. And you can even have more because that grace is still there. If you can speed up above that speed limit, you can even have more. Because that grace is still there. That grace is still there. The Bible speaking. Paul wrote to us in 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 8. Powerful scripture. He said, and God is able. Ah, so, such a powerful scripture. So encouraging. He said, and God is able. Even when we get to our limit. Even when we get to it to a point of saying, you know what, I'm giving up. This is probably not in my destiny. 
I will never get married. We will never ride a Range Rover. I was talking to my kids the other day. We were talking about cars. And then we were looking at uh, what cars would they even call. They were calling some kind of cars, you know, that they would like for, for me to buy for the family. So they're just calling cars, BMW. They were also calling cars. And then I said on the phone, I said, okay, what about a Range Rover? My son said, that you are going too far. Don't go there. Don't forget that one. Don't. <laughs> that didn't touch me. I said, <laughs> he said, that you are going too far. Forget Range Rover. Let's just deal with normal. <laughs> I said, okay, no problem. <laughs> but God is able. God is able to make all grace, not some type of grace, Honestly, there is nothing you want to do that you cannot do. You have been engraced for it. God is able to make all grace abound. Abound. All of it will abound. All of it will work towards you. So that now you, having all sufficiency, can now abound unto good work. And God wants us to abound unto good work. He said, let your light so shine that men may see your good work and give glory. Without the good work, there will be no glory to God. So God cares about your, your, your good works. All grace. All grace. So at that point when we feel frustrated, when we want to quit, want to walk out of that marriage, quit that job, throw in the towel, forget about that relationship, at that point, grace abounds. If we can just tap into that grace, grace abounds. And I tell you, the way to tap into grace is just to ask for grace. Father, I'm losing. This thing will make me lose my mind. Father, help me. Help me. Help me. More grace. More grace. Help me to take off the limits. Yeah. To, to exhaust. You know, you can't even exhaust the grace. So generous. My prayer is that we shall step into that level of that generous grace today in the name of Jesus Christ. It is not what you don't have that limits you. It is what you have we don't know how to use. In an era of the law, the man David enjoyed the grace of God. Defiled everything. They said don't eat a particular kind of food offered. He went to eat it. If the man did not die, still. In the time of the law, defiled it. Even defiled the Ten Commandments. That shall not kill. This man killed. Yet, is the man after God's heart. So if in the time of the law we still have people that live the life of grace and mercy this man was so bold he was even saying surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days ah, a murderer an adulterous person that is the grace so the grace is not that now because there's grace I can do and undo grace is knowing that when you are down you can still come up that's the grace. That's why it says the righteous shall fall seven times. At the first fall, it didn't look to the status as being righteous. That to fail does not mean that your record that Christ claimed has not been opened back again. But there's something here also that is, is important so that there's a balance that Paul told us. In Galatians 5 and verse 13, a translation says, for brethren, he said, for you brethren, talking about you and I, he said, you have been called on. You have been called unto freedom. A version says you have been called unto liberty. He said, "But do not use your liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another." So, is there a liberty to be better? Is there the freedom for a new beginning? Is there the liberty to, to for a second chance? Yes, it is there. So, what I'm saying this morning is, irrespective of where we are right now, there is a place called better. And we can get there. We have the grace to get there. The provision is there. We just need to speed up to that place. And we do that in the place of prayer. In the place of prayer. Some people, you know, I was applying for a job about four, four, four years ago. And I was sharing the story of, of recent. So there's this lady, we worked at a job. That job ended. And we both got into this second company. Now, at this second company, our cubicle was close to each other. And for some reason, I was able to grab during training faster than her. So she would come to my cubicle and ask me, I would go to her desk and help her out. And that was great. So while we were at that job, it was contract, temp a temporary gig. 
a new, a good job now opened up. And they wanted lots of people at that job in downtown Dallas. So, of course, we all got the emails. So, me and this lady applied. Went for an interview five years ago. And she got it. It happened. It so happened that we were given the same day. So, she entered that room, met this panel of three men, did the interview. She came out. It was my turn. When she came out, I said to myself, oh, I know they won't take her as me, they will take you. Because I'm the one that even teaches her at, at the office. I know she just went there to just warm up. And I entered the place, did my own, and I came out. And when the result was going to be sent, she was picked, and I was not picked. I said, ah, how possible? I know this job more than this lady. Is that as if she's a, of a different uh, color? They're not maybe the, we are both black people. So why was she picked? And I was not picked. It bothered me. But then I realized that it gets to a point in this life that when you appear at certain places, people don't see you. They just see a covering over you. The same way you see some people and you just detest them. You detest them. You don't want to do with them. You don't want to associate with them. There are also people that you just see and you just, you know, your heart just loves them. You want to deal with them. You want them to be your friend. Honestly, no strings attached. You see some people, you're like, wow, can I be your friend? Because there's a grace over their life. Yeah. That you are able to identify. So that I girl got that job and I didn't get it. It's not because she was better, because I, I, I was clearly better. But there must have been something else that cannot be explained. So it is grace. It is grace. So this morning, Let's not limit how far we can go by our assessment of our capacity. Yes. Nobody says we can't be better. Nobody says we cannot get to that higher place. We shouldn't be like my, my, my son who is saying that, forget about Range Rover. No, 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 no. No. <laughs> he was doing a clear assessment. Ah, daddy, how now? No, no, you can't do that. Let's just do normal cars. He was doing a clear assessment. I get but you know, he needs to understand that there is Christ. The Bible says we shall live in houses with this build. That's not, that's not just trying to make us lazy. No, we are hardworking people. But God is saying that even in our hard work, there's a place where God begins to multiply the works of our hands. He begins to multiply it. That's it. That grace is available. Whatever your hand find it to do, do with your might. But then he also says that God will bless the work of your hand. He said, whatever you lay your hands upon shall prosper. So when we, when we quote that scripture, we, we are not encouraging laziness. No, we are saying that God is just able. That's it. We are not placing a limit on God. If you rained manna for them in the wilderness, He can still give us manna. But it will be in a different manner. It will not be food, bread falling. Can somebody say Say we shall live in houses we didn't live in. And I received that for somebody here today in the name of Jesus. So this morning, let us take our heart off of it. Let's take our heart off of it. And in, in a minute, we're going to be having an anointing session. And that anointing is an anointing for exemption. Any evil in the land, I, I mean, someone, someone called to my attention how I can't remember who did. How this past week, about two um, occurrences already of somebody getting into a wrong car and somebody is shooting them. You know, so much anger in the, in the air. But today we are coming under, under the covering. Paul says, I bear me the mark of Christ. Let no man trouble me. And I pray that no man shall trouble us. In our going out and our coming in, we shall be covered and protected. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where God has said he will take you to, he's going to take you there. Don't look at where you are now and what you have around you to, to gauge the possibility. No, that possibility is on God's capacity, not on your ability. Yeah. Grace is available. Grace is available. And so when there's to feel down, when there's to feel discouraged, when there's to get a negative news, an email that makes your heart cry, just remember that God is able. Even in this situation, even at this condition of mine, 
that God is able to make all grace abound towards me. That me now having all sufficiency, I will abound to every good work. And I pray in the name of Jesus that even in this season, you and I will abound to every good work in the name of Jesus. If you believe that, can you say amen? Let, let's rise up to our feet. Let's have the, the, the worship team. Praise the Lord Jesus. I just want us to pray that in this season, there shall be exemption for me and my family. Exemption for me and my family. No evil shall come near me. No evil shall befall me. Myself and my family, we are covered, we are protected in the name of Jesus Christ. That the Spirit of God begins to influence the works of my hands. God's Spirit begins to influence my, my decisions, my going out, my coming in, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. The glory, for the praise. Let's have, let's have the anointing oil. Yes. And so, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that this oil touches our forehead and our hands. That the Bible says, and the yoke shall be broken because of the anointing. Any yoke around our neck is broken in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And as you dip your hand in the oil, just, just begin to pray. Just begin to pray before we anoint ourselves together this morning. Just begin to pray. The Bible says, and on that day, the body shall be lifted from off your shoulders and the yoke from off your neck. He said, and the yoke shall be broken because of the anointing. Because of the anointing. The yoke shall be broken because of the anointing. And every yoke in my family, every yoke in my life, every yoke in my heart is broken in the name of Jesus Christ. You can place that hand on your forehead and just begin to prophesy over your life. The yoke shall be broken in the name of Jesus. I have the mind of Christ. I anoint myself this day for exemption. No evil shall befall me nor any evil come near my dwelling. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree that I'm going forward and making progress. In the name of Jesus Christ. You know, I, I, was, I was thinking during the week, and I'm saying this before we pray the next prayer point, about generational curses. Generational curses. Because I don't like it. I just like to focus on generational blessings. So, but while I was just thinking about it, this is what, this, this is what came to my, to, my, to my spirit. You know, generational curse talks about a programming. That's really what it is. A generational curse is a programming that if instilled in me from my ancestors, from my parents, now I've also been programmed to act in the way that they have also acted. It's simply about, about programming. So let's say growing up, the only way I've seen my dad solve problems is to borrow money. He borrowed money for my school fees. He borrowed money for us to feed. That's how I've seen my dad solve problems. I'm telling you, no matter how you, no matter what you become, that will also be your default. And so, whenever there's a problem, you too would want to borrow money to solve the problem, because that is the that has become a programming. That is actually how generational curse works. It's a, it's a programming. It's a programming. But this morning, the Bible says that the Lord shall blot out handwritings of ordinances. Whatever pattern, whatever wiring that we have in our, in our hearts, in our minds, I pray in the name of Jesus that today the Lord shall rewrite them for us. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so even at this moment, if there are certain patterns you've seen in your life that you know that you do not like, you do not desire, so now we are all having children. Go for me that patterns in our lives are now being again passed on to our own children. There are things you are experiencing that didn't start with us, but they can end with us. They didn't start with us, but they can end with us. And so in this, in this moment, I want you to just pray specifically with understanding and say, Father, every one of these negative patterns, 
I, 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 I repent, repent from them. From they will no longer be my lot. They will no longer be my portion. They will no longer be my experience. In the name of Jesus, any programming of debt, of mismanagement of funds, any, any programming of sin, any programming of selfishness, of adultery, any programming of, of lies, of gossip, of failure, any programming, failed marriage, any programming of kids dropping out of school, I repent. I denounce myself from those programs. Any programming of health issues, people dying at a certain age due to cancer in my lineage, people not having long life. The Bible says, With long life shall I satisfy you and show you my salvation. He says, declare thou that thou mightest be justified. Declare this morning. Declare this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. Receive it for yourself this morning and for your family. Speak over your children. That they are blessed. That they are blessed. Right now, if there's any pain in any part of your body, can you touch that part? Or if you're standing in the gap for someone who you know is going through pain in their body, right now we take authority over sickness, over pain in the name of Jesus Christ. And I decree this morning that you are healed of every infirmity, of every pain in the name of Jesus Christ. The healing virtue of God flows right now. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. The Bible says the part of the just is as a shining light. That shineth brighter and brighter to the perfect day. You know, sometimes it could be, there could be sun, but there could still be rain. So the fact that there's, there's a storm does not mean that your part is still not shining brighter and brighter. So don't be moved. For you and I, our path shall shine brighter and brighter. In the name of Jesus Christ. And don't forget, God is able. Able to do what? To all the perfect. You all are good Bible students. All right. But also remember that God is able to make all grace about us. That we have in all sufficiency. I understand you've done wrong. I understand that you've, 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 you've been bad. You couldn't have been as bad as Saul. Or, or as bad as David. There's hope for you. And God will make all grace abound. In the name of Jesus. God will make all grace abound. In the name of Jesus Christ. Did you receive it this morning? Can you shout hallelujah? I feel like praising God this morning. All right. If you're an adult, you're not dancing, I will call it to the front. Praise the Lord. Higher, higher. Higher, 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 higher. Lift Jesus higher. Higher, higher. Aya 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 lift Jesus high lift him high aya 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 lift Jesus high aya 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 lift Jesus high lift him high aya 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 Yeah. 
Praise the Lord. All right, let's let's wrap up the service for today. Next Sunday, we are having a celebration service. So we're going to be having the naming ceremony of Brother Kevin. Brother Kevin is in church this morning. I wasn't expecting it. I thought he would still be in you know, take care of the family. So, but thanks for being here. So he has friends coming in from town. So let's also try to be here to worship to celebrate them. And so next so Sunday, we are going to have a talking drum. Yeah. Talking talk drum. drum. I don't have Agbada, and I love to wear Agbada next Sunday. But I don't have any, any native. So next Sunday is celebration service and family and friends service. So let's try to invite friends to be here. We'll be here to celebrate naming ceremony with uh, Kevin and the sister yesterday and the new baby. Pretty baby girl, looks like the father. Uh, obviously, was the one doing the work. So, <laughs> and again, it's going to be food as there was food today and refreshments and lots of praise. We're going to have an extra keyboard. We're going to have a nice praise, praise service here. Praise the Lord. How many of us are excited about it? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, really. I'm looking forward to it. So next Sunday's celebration service, let's invite friends and let's, let's come, you know. Celebrate the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we can we can we give our offerings before we leave? Let, let's give our offerings. Even in this in this season, I believe that the Lord will cause all of our seeds to speak for us. If you believe that, can you say amen? Even in this season, in this season, you know, the Lord will still cause our seed to speak for us in the name of Jesus Christ. And so let's let's not be weary. In good doing, every one of your seeds shall speak in Jesus' precious name. And if we are done with that, let's just pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this seed and our offerings and our tithes. And we just pray that as a consequence of we acting to give in obedience, that as the word has said, you open unto us the windows of heaven and shower unto us blessings that we shall not even have enough room to contain it in Jesus' name. We pray for good measure, press down. In the name of Jesus, running over, he says, shall men give unto us in Jesus' name. And as we give today, we receive creativity in our minds. We receive creativity, we receive divine ideas that will set us apart in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. In the land of famine, the Bible says that even Joseph prospered. Isaac prospered. For us, we shall prosper in the name of Jesus. And again, I decree. That even as we are hearing sounds of layoffs, for us we shall lay up gold as dust. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be. In Jesus' most precious name, amen. Hallelujah.
uh, let's share the grace and fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. And surely his goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you.